I created this first image using mid journey of a dog in a spacesuit. It looks kind of flat and things look a little cut out. But then I created this image of a dog in a spacesuit. The difference is the first image had a stylized value of zero. The second image had a stylized value of 1000. So how exactly does this work and how can we, can we explore the various styles of mid journey? There are several things that we can play with. There are, there's stylized for one. There's also several different styles or different models and also some modes we can explore. But starting off with stylized, which I just touched on, if you have a look at the documentation, stylized is the essentially a way of increasing what mid journey has been trained on. So what you're trying to do is take what makes mid journey, mid journey in the AI image generation world. And you're trying to increase that. The default setting is 100. But when you compare zero to a thousand, you can see how there's a big difference in quality because we're favoring what mid journey is known for. So how do you use it? It's pretty straightforward. Go to imagine, type in your prompt and then type in dash dash stylize zero if you want to go to zero or a thousand if you want to go to a thousand. Let's type in zero and then we'll compare this image at a few different levels. And as before, you can see zero looks pretty flat and uh, lifeless, but still impressive considering it's AI art. 100, this is the default, a big step up already, but 200 starts to add in a little bit more personality. However, the banana's gone and we're starting to lose some of our prompt. Here, we have the banana with a little bit more personality at 400, switch up to 600, we get a little bit more dramatic. And as the scale goes along, as it gets to things like 800, it's a little more just different and it's harder to track. And at 1000, there's literally no banana at all, just coffee. So we get some pretty interesting imagery, but not necessarily strictly adhering to the prompt. So it's not simply a matter of higher is better, but zero does seem to take a lot of the style out of it. What I actually recommend you do is to test. When you're creating images, test a few different levels of stylized to see what you get. However, the power of stylized is actually combining it with a few other methods. But things can get weird. And by that, I mean using weird mode with stylized is another great way to enhance your results. So let's try the monkey again. But this time we're gonna go dash dash weird for a level of zero. And what we get is essentially the same. This time, crank the weird up to 1000, and now we've got something that's really strange. But again, what if we add stylize of 800 to the end, and now it's a lot more artistic and very sort of funky looking at the same time. So what exactly happens if we compare some of these different levels? Starting with the weird of 500, with 400 stylized, we get something that's pretty quirky, but you crank that stylized up to 800 and it does start to get a little bit weirder. Same weird level, but this time we're going to stylize 1000 and again, just a bit strange. That weirdness has kicked in, but not too much. Now I have a weird of 1000 and I think they're definitely looking very weird at 400. Stylized of 800 now and you can see it's really starting to get strange. And now when you add the stylized of 1000, this is an incredibly odd picture. Well, let's crank the weird up to max of 3000 with a stylized of 400, a very strange picture indeed, a stylized of 800, something completely different, but we max out weird and stylized and we get this very strange kind of weird Batman ape picture that uh, is looks low resolution and is just completely absurd. So you can observe how weird has definitely altered the picture in regard to what it actually shows, but adding stylized to it almost acts like a multiplier in that direction. Almost like weirds the scale of left to right and stylizes how deep you want to go. You can really play with these different levels and uh, have an almost infinite range of styles to play with when using mid journey. But what about the styles and the models themselves? Those are also different ways to get different looks in your imagery. If I refer to my uh, mid journey cheat sheet, which if you sign up for my newsletter, you can download for free using the link below. You can see there's a whole bunch of different models and styles here that you can experiment with all the way from versions one, two, three, and then version four and five had a lot of styles and also Niji. So let's explore some of those so you can see exactly what to expect. So starting off with Niji, if we take our exact same prompt again, we'll type dash dash Niji, we get a very distinct anime style because Niji is an anime model, but it has three styles within it. And we're going to basically compare those by typing in again, dash dash Niji and then dash dash style. And there's a few different ones in there. We'll start off with cute. You can see here, we've got a style cute and it creates something that is very cute and cartoony because it has been trained on a data set of very cute 
sort of images. But we scroll down and we've got a style called expressive, which I've plugged in after. And you can see it's a little bit more expressive in style, a little bit different than what we've got with Qt or even just with Niji straight up. And then we've got Scenic, which is designed for scenery, but adds a lot of detail and a lot of depth to the image, including some glows. So you can see by experimenting with these styles, we can get different anime styles, and you can even then take it further by throwing things at it like a photorealism or even playing with stylized to mix it up, similar to what we did with weird mode. Now the style command also works with versions four and five and the sort of various subversions within that. If I go to version five, Straight up, I can go to version, say 5.1 or 5.2. And with version five, I can do V dash dash V 5A if I want to choose version 5A. But then we can add dash dash style raw to the end of that to get a different result again. That takes away a lot of the opinionated nature and gives you a lot more control with your prompt. But you may not get good results unless you're really, really spot on with your prompt engineering. Now, moving on, we also have version four. You type in dash dash V and four, and you actually have another style, two styles actually. Version 4A, which is dash dash style 4A, or dash dash style 4B, which are two different styles of version four. There's also version, there's also style 4C, but that is actually the default style, so you just simply have to type in version four. But there's actually a hidden style called cursed. So you type in dash dash V four, and then dash dash style cursed to get these cursed images that are supposed to look a bit creepy and weird. And it's kind of like a horrified version of what weird mode is. And I think it's a lot of fun to play with. But now getting away from the styles, I do want to finalize on something else. Using versions one, two, and three is also another way to get a completely different style. Because versions four and onwards, the images look very coherent and very sort of uh, easy to see exactly what it is. But the older versions have this can sometimes have this creepy effect to them. They have this really cool imagery because it's not quite as advanced. We get more mistakes and more odd sort of things added into the mix. And I actually think it's a cool way to explore the different styles of mid journey by going back to version one version two or version three and seeing what results you get. You get some pretty creepy images in my opinion and you can have a lot of fun playing with those old versions. And also there's the test models, dash dash test, dash dash test P. They also have dash dash creative that you can add to the end and get some more results. These images turn out pretty good, but um, you can see how uh, by playing with these different models and styles, you can really sort of, you've got a really diverse range of looks you can go for. But otherwise, that's it for today. And don't forget to check out that PDF cheat sheet. There's two pages and there's a whole bunch of information there, not just models and styles. There's a whole bunch of codes and parameters and everything on there. That is in the description below. Just simply sign up for my newsletter and you'll get sent that in your email. You can subscribe and unsubscribe at any time. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please consider giving it a like. I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.